In my last video, I started learning how to program an AI to play games and detect objects. But after rewatching it multiple times, I don't think I have explained the concepts well enough to justify the amount of things I have learned throughout the process. While creating that video, I was heavily influenced by the current YouTube trend where everything is so fast paced. Everyone is rushing and squeezing as much information as possible to create the shortest video. We're trying to cater to the algorithm, to the people with an attention span of a goldfish. But that's not my style. I feel like every time I do that, my video just does not express all the excitement, all the information that I want to give. Hence, I apologize, not because of the things I'm gonna do, but because of the information slash details that I miss while creating a fast paced video. If you are curious about how AI actually works more on the technical side and you are interested to learn how to visualize your AI training in real time, this is the video for you. I have the codes already down in description and you can just play with it. Just open, create a Google account and just play with it and just press play button and you can see how it works. All right, let's get into the video. So I did continue my AI journey after that video. And there's just one thing I was really unsatisfied about. I was originally inspired by Code Bullet's video of creating AI. What I like most of his video is that he actually shows how the AI learns or trains. Since I started this journey, which is not too long ago, whenever I try to train or let the AI learn, it is all just text-based. For example, it shows me the numbers of training, the data of its loss, the efficiency, the graphs and stuff. I tried finding the internet to look for ways to actually do this, but I just can't find it, whether is it just too simple or just true travel. I'm not sure whether it's just me, but I find it fascinating to see the growth of an AI, to actually see it learn in real time. I understand practically why we don't do this is because it is just too slow and takes up too much storage space, but I just want to actually see in the beginning stages how AI actually learns and see its development over time. But as they said, answers find themselves for those who seek. It all started when I found Google Colab. If you do not know what Google Colab is, it is a basically a browser-based programming IDE that you can program and run your Python code. You see, I'm always worried that my computer doesn't have enough processing power to run large machine learning models. And with Google Colab, I can just borrow Google's GPU to train my machine learning model, which is much faster and saves me a lot of storage space. The best part is you can use it in any computer with a browser, which means I can do it during my work. Please don't tell my boss. But it does come with its own limitations. So I wanted to learn how to program my own reinforcement learning model from scratch using Google Colab. Since in my last video, I'm just using pre-made machine learning models to train my AI. Reinforcement learning is a type of AI that learns through trial and error, just like a baby. If the baby eats whatever you give him, you'll reward him with a candy so that he knows that he should do that. In contrast, if the baby cries a lot, you will need to take his toy away from him as a punishment. That's how a baby learns what is right and wrong. I found a great reinforcement learning tutorial from a website called learndataseat.com. It guides you through Q-learning algorithm, which is the most basic RL algorithm you can find. We are going to develop a self-driving taxi that picks up people and drop them off at a desired location. For starters, we need to create an environment for the game or simulation to run. That way we can control the taxi, the position of the taxi, all the data we need to train an AI to actually play this game. I would imagine if you want to play an external game like League of Legends, you need to actually manually capture all the information on the screen in order to train an RL AI. So to help us with creating this taxi and environment, we'll get it from OpenAI Gym. They have pre-made simulation or games that we can use. So we do not need to program everything from scratch. Makes our job much easier. Here is when things get interesting. So copying the code directly from the tutorial won't work since they are using Jupyter Notebook, which is a local software for programming. And to display or render the taxi game environment, 
you need to change two lines of code. So here we install all the packages, basically um, other people's code into this, into our, our IDE. And this is where the magic happens. So here we see we have ENV, we create the environment. Right now, we need to actually render or display the environment. And in Google Collab, you will need to do it differently rather than in like a software like Jupyter Notebook. So the way you do it is, the, 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 the concept is actually very simple. And I'm not sure why I didn't think about it. So basically, you import a recorder library, and then you basically press the recording button every time the environment is created. So you see ENV Gymnomic, so this is when the game environment is created. Then I started to record my game environment. This is just resetting to start the game again. And this is where the agent starts moving in the environment. So right now it is not in AI mode, it's just doing random stuff. So this keeps recording the game environment until it ends. So once it ends, it's going to save it in a folder called VIDDD, <laughs> stands for video. So let's run this and you'll see what I mean. Here, I'm just going to automatically play the video file. Okay, so wait a minute. So, yep. So right now, I, I didn't use the RENV. I didn't use the recording one. So every time you call the RENV, the, it is going to save it. So let's just call it. And then this will work. And it's going to save it in this video file. As you can see, I've already run and it has recorded. So that's it. <laughs> And as you can see, this is the video file, which you can actually download. So this and this, same thing. We did it! We did it! We did it! Yay! Yeah, this is it. This is what I was searching for all this time. This is how you visualize your AI like Code Bullet does. Actually, I accidentally discovered that you can do it. I was originally intending to only just record one single game, but when I was running the AI, it just helps me record a whole bunch of training steps so I can see each training steps and how they look like when they're training. I was getting thousands of videos because that's how much training the AI have done. However, I do not need to know each training steps since the improvement is so little across just one training step. What I need to do now is to record for every 100 training steps and I'll get one video. That way it will train faster and save some storage space as well. I use the simple if else statement to do this. So you can see if um, it reaches 100 training uh, steps, it's going to use RENV, which is the recording ones. And if not, it's just going to use the normal ENV ones. You can definitely change this to let's say 1000, 10,000. So every 1000 steps only you record and save the video. For this command, it is just to zip whatever you have in this video file into a zip folder and you can save it easily. So here I have all the training training data or training steps we have here all different games so this is the earliest game so if you click on it and watch the um the replay okay okay so you can definitely slow this down if you want so this is my taxi game as you can see it started off from here and the person here is just behind and so you can see this is the person and the goal is to take this person and bring it to the hotel. At first, the AI doesn't know how to do anything. It doesn't, it's just starting to learn. So it just randomly moves to places just to calculate its value. So as you can see, it moves, 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 can't find the people or oh, you found it. It took it, took it and then it goes to the hotel. It's trying to find the hotel so random <laughs> this is so random but if you just go a bit so here I have like i think 1000 1000 training steps so let's just go a bit further and look here so the goal is trying to reach here so it, it still fails to reach 
So this like takes six seconds. So if you scroll down to halfway point. Okay, so it still doesn't really get it yet, but I feel like once it gets it, so it picks up and then it reaches, it ends. Okay, so it takes some time at first, so it, at first it starts from here, goes, 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 trying to find the person, and then once he found it, immediately picks him up and go to the hotel. So let's just scroll down, scroll. Okay, so I did here. Okay, so you, you will see that it gets faster and faster. Just now it takes an average of 6 seconds at the beginning just to get the person to the hotel. Right now it just takes around 3 seconds. As you can see, it starts from here. Goes, 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 goes. Trying to find... Oh, we found it. Wait, it found it. Once it found it... Yep, it found it. And then goes to the, the, the one. So it, it gets faster and faster. So once you reach almost the end, like around 1000 training steps, you can see that's it, less than one second. So it starts from here, it immediately knows where is it. I mean, it still doesn't know, but it's, it, it knows, it picks it up, goes to look, that's easy. So you, you can see it's pretty consistent. So, see, it, it gets so fast. If I go another one towards the end as well, it gets faster and faster as you can see. Alright, let me simply explain the Q learning algorithm used to train this awesome taxi AI. So, I need a book here to, um, actually explain the steps of this Q-learning algorithm because it is not easy at all. When I actually understand it, I actually feel quite proud of myself. So first of all, Q-learning, the Q stands for quality. So basically it's quality learning algorithm. And if we open up the simulation game environment, each state is each column. So if you see this is one state and if the taxi moves there, it is another state. If the taxi moves here, it is another state. So there are 500 total states. And there is a Q table, which you see here, I have printed the Q table. And initially, all the values are zero since it is haven't started training yet. And there are 500 um, rows of this, which represents 500 states. And the columns is just the actions that it can take, like top, going up, down, and if you see here, this is the Q learning algorithm. And this is the core formula you use in the Q learning algorithm. So every time this runs, every time it trains, it will update this Q table. So you'll see values in this Q table one by one when it starts training. And after, for example, 1000 like training, you can see this Q table will be filled up with like values. Let me see. Yep. Let me print out this Q table and you can see the Q tables are all filled with values. And based on that value, the AI or agent or taxi will choose the best, um, we will choose the highest value when it reaches that state. For example, for very broad example, when it reaches this state, so for now this is that state, and you can see which is the highest value. If this is, for example, oh, okay, this or this is the highest value, then it will pick this action to go to for the next step. So it keeps repeating until it reach the goal. There's an extra step which is evaluating the performance of your AI. You can compare the before and after performance of your AI to see how well it does after your training. So here you see the results after 100 episodes. So the episodes is an official term for games. So how many training games it have went through. The average time steps, which is the average action that it takes within each game is 13 steps. So to be honest, it is actually pretty good. It used to take around 100 plus steps to a maximum of 200 steps. And right now it just takes 13 steps to reach its goal. So I will say, ping. I hope you better understand my Q learning algorithm. Tell me if I made any mistakes because I'm learning as well. 
feel free to comment any questions, like and subscribe. Alright, thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic evening. Budget Zero, peace out.